How's it folks? Welcome to 4x4 Viewfinder. As you probably read in the description, today we are tackling a uh, DCAT for a Toyota Fortuner uh, D4D. I think the Hilux um, downpipe looks exactly the same, I'm not sure, but it should work in a similar fashion. You've got a flange on both ends of the uh, catalytic converter that you can loosen up and then remove it. And then from there, I'll show you what to do on the inside um, to clean out your your uh, catalytic converter now um, I know in most countries this is not exactly legal um, you aren't really supposed to do it you're supposed to replace it so if you live in one of those countries where it's necessary for you to replace it rather do that um, and get your uh, your fuel economy and that stuff back up to par if you are suffering with some uh, fuel economy issues um, we are slightly, I've done all I can with regards to inflating the tires a little bit over the manufacturer's pressures. Um, that helped significantly getting some fuel economy on the vehicle. Um, but it still doesn't feel right. It still feels like I've got, there's something missing there. So, um, I'm going to do the decat. Um, this vehicle is a couple of years old, so I think it's probably got a lot of build up and all that stuff. As you guys know, I don't chip or map my vehicles i might do a map somewhere in the future but we'll cross that bridge bridge winced we get there but for now i just want to do a decap and see if that helps getting the fuel economy back to uh, where these guys are supposed to go but yeah without further ado let's jump into it Alright folks, so this is the engine, this is on the right hand side of the vehicle, and if you look down there, that is where the exhaust goes down, um, to the, the, that's the first flange that you'll need to remove. Now what I suggest you do is, and that's what I did, especially if your vehicle is a couple of years old, what you do is take some Q20, spray those bolts that you see there, um, one on either side, spray them with a uh, quite a substantial amount of Q20 at least an hour before you start physically working on give the Q20 some time or WD40 or any penetrating oil that will work give it some time to actually get in there and, and do what it's supposed to do right guys so <coughs> as you can see that's the engine the gearbox to the side there this is where the pipe comes down there is that flange also Q20 from the bottom or lubricating all that from the bottom as well just so you know you've got it properly covered right you follow the pipe down and here's here's the culprit right and then on this side here let me just get that in picture there we go right so there is the rear flange Q20 that substantially as well make sure you've got that stuff in there all the way Otherwise you might strip the bolt and you don't want to strip the bolt. Okay, so then this whole pipe will be removed. Um, you can see uh, here's one of the hangers as well. Um, you're gonna, it's going to be a bit of work to get it off there as well, but yeah. Okay, so after you've Q20'd your, your setup, at least an hour, go make yourself a cup of coffee, chill somewhere, and when you're ready, let's jump into it. Alright folks, so a couple of um, minutes have gone by, maybe 45 minutes or so. I think that's more than enough time for it to soak in and everything. So what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to show you the tools you need to do this. Um, it's a 14 socket, 40 millimeter socket you'll need for it. Um, another thing on the top flange, the, the bolts at the back are welded to the flange. So you only need to turn it loose from the bottom, that's all you need to do. 
um, and then at the back here you've got a bolt and a nut the nut is not welded to the back flange so you'll need these tools so what I've brought with me since I've not done this before I'm just bringing stuff for in case I've got some extensions with a 14 socket and a power bar and I've got a 14 spanner I've also brought my vurvur my impact range now because this is exhaust bolts and stuff you'd want to crack them uh, I don't like using the vurvur to turn loose these bolts because um, you know you could strip and break them easily and these aren't so much just any bolts that you can put on them so um, I just use the vurvur to crack it and I'll show you what I do um, guys you must excuse me I'm gonna try and put the camera so that you can see what's happening but space is really limited and yeah uh, you might not see so well but yeah let's get into it and see how this turns loose I'm gonna start at the front and then we'll move to the back all right folks so if we did our jump proper um, we should not have that much problems removing these bolts okay so I've got like a long extension this one might actually work better just a shorter one all right so what I'm gonna do is with the vurvur that's a little trick I learned first I'm going to give it just a couple of knocks to tighten it right now that might be counterintuitive but um, it actually works so make sure you are tightening all right and just give it one or two knocks all right tighten all right that's it then loosen same on the other side that that will crack the bolt all right tighten again and loosen all right and now the best is to start work with the power bar and the extension that way you have a feel for the bolt and you know you're not damaging it but it seems like I'm in for a tough time here Angle that I've got power in. Let's see if we can put it like that. There we go. Right. Oh, shit. Oh, Sorry, guys. Hit the camera. <laughs> okay, so that one actually came loose pretty easily. Um, actually surprised me a bit because I was expecting a lot more resistance there we go oh is that okay I'm gonna leave that one in slightly first yeah, let's work on the bottom one let's hope I don't knock the camera out again <laughs> one two three oh shit yeah, oh, cocky camera. There again. This time I broke my tripod. Damn it. Here's a quick repair to the tripod. Let's hope it works. Alright, folks, we're back online. Okay, so, where were we? Okay, I broke them loose with the power bar and they are very loose. So, um, uh, it's no need for me to continue working with the ratchet or anything so I'm going to take the impact wrench finish uh, loosening that and then we'll jump into the rear one and take it from there alright let's get into it Make sure you've got it turning the right way. Get one down. Okay. 
Look, as you can hear, they didn't even need to, to kick and the bolts came loose, so that's good news. <laughs> it means these bolts are still good, in very good condition. Right, let's tackle the rear one. Alright folks, I'm winging it. I'm hoping I've got the camera looking at the right spot. Bear with me, maybe that's a bit high. Right, stick it from there. There we go, right. Let's see. This time, I'm going to use a spanner. And the power bar. I think... I think it might not have much of an issue coming loose. Wrong though. There we go. Okay, it's cracked. Let's try this one. Let's ease it in. Crack it that way. Crack it this way. Okay, folks, be advisable when you get close to the end that you don't catch yourself loosening this thing up and it falling on you. Um, it's a good idea to do the rest by hand. And we're loose. Well, semi loose. We just need to remove it. <clears throat> just need to remove the hanger. And then we're out. I'll see you in the garage when we start work on the cat. Alright, folks, so here's the culprit. Um, so that's the cat that we converted in there. I just had a look because one of my first things was if I take this off fix everything else, make it ready to start work and then find the cat is already removed I would have been peed off a little bit but luckily it's still in there so I can show you guys exactly what it looks like and how to go to work with this Alright so guys as you can see solid as I can, bottom side in a drum, um, but I'm doubtful this is going to work, I think I'm going to have to drop it a bit more, something more to the lines of this, because the problem is I still need to be able to hit my hammer. Okay. Alright, let's take it from there. Okay folks, I don't know if you can see, I'm trying to make some light in there. That's what it looks like, that little honeycomb there. Now we're basically just going to knock it out. We're going to take a hammer and some long tools and just knock it out. Break it down until it all falls out the bottom. And then we'll take it from there.
so now you can see it's clear inside all the way through I can see light coming in the other side which means there's nothing coming through there or laying in the way okay so this is the crap that's inside now you can see those little bits of honeycomb laying there in the corner and then this like I don't know cotton wool type of material that was probably put around the edges of the things to prevent it from rattling on the inside but yeah it looks this is what it looks like it's not very strong you can actually kind of crush it with your fingers but this is the crap that's on the inside and this basically absorbs the nasties coming from your engine and you know, it's hard to tell whether it was clogged or not but if I look close up on there it seems like it was um, which means yeah the engine would have worked harder than what it needed to you can see uh, if, you, if you look because those are like the little pathways that let the air go through and here at the back it looks cleaner than it does in the front so you can see there was a build up a rather large build up all this crap so yeah right takes care of that well all i'm going to do now is i'm going to take the compressor fill it up full power and then blow from the front to the rear just to make sure that there's nothing on the inside forgotten i'm going to blow from both sides just to make sure there's nothing on the inside because if there's anything left behind you might sit with a situation where you clog up your um, silencer um, or your exhaust box so um, i just want to make sure there's nothing in the inside then i'm going to put it back um, i'm not going to show you that it's just the reverse of what it is to put it in basically you tighten the bolts hand tighten um, not very tight just as tight as you can like a, not like the Buddha one where you turn it till it strips and a quarter turn back you basically just turn it give it properly sufficient tightness so that it doesn't come loose I'm also gonna take the bolt and I put some uh, dangers on it some copper slip on it just to prevent in the future should I need to work on it to prevent it from binding again just to make things a bit easier for myself and then from there yeah we'll do a startup um, and then take it from there so next up startup Sounds more or less the same, so if you, for you guys who don't want your vehicle to make a lot of noise, taking the cat out doesn't really make that big a difference. So now it's just a long term drive and see how the fuel economy does. Okay, so the guys on the 4x4 viewfinder group, Raiz and Akib, you guys wanted me to take the exhaust box out and put the straight pipe. Um, this sounds almost like yours, just not as loud and I think that's a great compromise between what the wife will allow and what, what I want and, but have a listen a nice whistling sound, it's got a little bit more of a growl so yeah, pretty stoked right, folks, so yeah I've got various parts. I've got a part from the front, I've got a part from the middle, and I've got a part from the rear. The way I know is, you can see there, that's the front, that's the one with the most soot build up. This one here is, is the rear, there's almost no soot there. And then this is the center, so let me just orientate it. You can see to the rear part of it, there's less soot than there is on the front. So Let's put those together like that. Right, you also inside get this stuff. That goes around the converter. Um, 
probably to insulate it as well. Now what I want to do here is have a bit of a closer look. Let's start from the front. Now clearly you could see this is from the front. There's a lot of soot and stuff there. See. See. And now just hang on. I'm gonna see this part here. Look at all that. So clearly you can see that this is this soot build up. Look at that. And these channels are almost blocked. Look how much of it is coming out. So although the rear might look okay, the front as you can see, okay if we take this as the front part now, and we look at this, let's see if we can find a nice spot. Look there, there's almost no suit here. And even to the rear, yeah. Only in the front, so it looks like the, the front 5 to 10 centimeters basically causes a blockage because it builds up and builds up builds up here nothing gets to the rear or gets through or well, it gets through but it puts way much more restriction on the engine than it should so that's why I'm not a fan of using the, I don't know uh, there must be another way for them to to get the emissions right without using this crap and putting so much strain on the engine because it's fine now you buy the car it's brand new first hundred thousand kilometers or whatever you're running fine and then from there you start having issues or fuel economy issues and all that stuff it's uh, this doesn't make sense right and then let's look, have a look at the rear the, uh, the rear almost looks new and once again look at how clear these channels are there's nothing there so yeah folks I say get rid of it as soon as possible. I don't know. 